Hi hey folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. I wanted to talk more uh, in today's little walk and talk of what I mentioned yesterday and talked about in yesterday afternoon's video. It's kind of a continuation or an expansion on that. The reason is, is because I believe there may be no more important thing going on in our time other than the spiritual. I know a lot of people, when I say things like that, they're like, wow, oh, yes, I'm a very much strongly whole Bible believing Yeshua serving. It, it's, I'm all on that, okay? We're talking about the physical stuff. Um, you know, we talk about the Great Reset and Agenda 2030 and, and all the different collapse stuff that's scenarios that's going on right now. Uh, I firmly believe, and I've been saying this for a long time, I was saying this, and this isn't bragging, I was saying this back before really a lot of people were talking about it. It was still controversial, and people were like, oh, you're a doomsdayer. When I was saying that we are in the midst, or at least the beginning stages of a, coll a collapse, not really just a, an American collapse, but really a global collapse. This has all been planned out uh, there's there could be or there are but there could be various reasons that this is happening some that we know and others that we're still unsure of but everything I remember a long time ago a couple of years ago or more I made a video and I was talking about you picture yourself going to a, a big art museum and I, I've, I don't know that I've ever been to one, one of the really big ones, you know. And it's got this huge mur mural on the wall, right? And you're standing back at the other end of the room and you can see the whole mural. What happens when you walk up and you're this far away from it? You see just the things that's right in front of your face. And every time you take a step back, you can see more. Well, when we look at financial stuff or the war in Ukraine or food shortages or you know, Sri Lanka collapsing or, you know, Europe falling apart. We're just looking at one picture of that mural. We step back and we see the whole thing. We see that the world is going through a collapse. Before I get started, I just wanted to mention, because people ask me all the time, this shirt is from our good friends over at sanctifiedsupplyco.com. You like it? You can go over there and check out their website. They have some really amazing stuff. Anyways, because people ask. I always ask, where would you get that t-shirt? Um, my wife and I have designed, she's designed several. I think I've only done two. And we're getting ready to uh, unveil some of the t-shirts that we've designed. If anyone's interested, if not, I know some of you aren't into printed tees. And honestly, when I go out in public, I rarely wear a printed tee. Uh, but if you like them, they'll be available soon so last night or yesterday it was uh, Joe Biden uh, gave a Labor Day speech uh, you notice I didn't wish everyone a happy Labor Day go look into Labor Day and what it really how it really got started and you'll figure out why anyways so he gave this speech and you know how block, bl broken clocks are they're right at least twice a day and I actually agree with what he said in part of his little speech. Uh, his motives and his ideas are different than mine, but I agree with what he says. And he exactly is saying, talking about that we're in the midst of a collapse, even though he didn't use those words. He said, and you can go view this video clip over on tphnetwork.com if you want to, our website. He said that we are are at an inflection point in history. He said civilizations go through these inflection points every six to eight generations. And when they go through these inflection points, from that point after, everything has changed. It's all different. For the generations coming after that inflection point, the whole civilization changes. He said, and it's up to us, them meaning, whether it to be changed for good or bad. Well, his version of good and bad is very different than my version of good and bad. The point is, is that he flat out said it. Most people aren't gonna pick up on that. He's some 
you know, dri dri dribbling crazy old man and they don't pick up on it, but he did have a moment of clarity there. If you go back six or seven generations, you'll take us, yourself back to the Civil War or the war between the states, which was very much a minor collapse of our civilization because the way things were prior stopped being and they were different after that. And it wasn't just different because the ending of the Civil War led, it didn't cause it, but it led to the ending of slavery uh, on the plantation. It also led to the beginning of everybody being slaves to the national government, corporate government, and uh, you know centralized banks. It led to that. Do your history. Don't just read what they and believe what they taught you in your school history books. There's a lot more going on there. And yes, slavery is bad. Slavery in all forms is bad. I would have been against it then as I'm against it now. But there's a lot more that happened there than that. So let's move on. We are at an inflection point. I believe we're at an inflection point partly because it's being controlled. You can go back 30 to 40 years ago, and really you could go back even further, but you can go back and, and you can look at the, the meeting at Bretton Woods where it was established that the US dollar was the global reserve currency, uh, and we went off of the gold system. You can go back into the, the 90s when the United Nations and other NGOs we're coming up with plans like the Agenda 21 plan, which led to the Agenda 2030 plan with the final Agenda 2050 plan. And then of course, those led to the Great Reset, which has happened uh, since the beginning of these, this global health crisis. We are, I believe, watching uh, well, it's partly a natural cyclical thing, but also it's very possible, very likely, I'm not going to go out on the limb and say this, but it's very likely that we are in fact watching and, and involved in the, the end times that's been foretold in the Bible. And I was reading the other day of a, just some random person had their own theory on that, and they said that it's quite possible that this isn't God's appointed in time that these global leaders, these wicked people, are trying to create a synthetic version, a, a false end times under their control. It's possible, uh, but the point is, is that it's becoming very clear to everyone, or at least to anyone that will look, the ones that have eyes to see and the ears to hear, that uh, we are in an orchestrated, controlled demolition. This is quite significant because, as I've said many times on this channel before, this is different than preparing for a tornado or a hurricane, or even preparing for a stock market collapse, or preparing for, you know, World War III, or you know a pandemic all of those can be bad what we're preparing for what we're dealing with is well everything happening at once a collapse of everything um, and it, it creates a, a very unique problems that we have to solve because in all those other scenarios if they're all individual you know the the whole most all of them, there will be still some semblance of normalcy there to, to kind of be a foundation and tether ourselves to. And what we're going through now, we're not going to have that. I believe that government will still exist. Um, unless their plans just completely go wrong and the father steps in and says, no, this is my deal. But I believe they're, the government's still going to exist. And so we do have to deal with that, but it's going to be a different kind of government. It's going to be a controlling totalitarian government, much more so than it is now, uh, with very advanced technologies that they've been talking and bragging about 
for years now, and for especially the last few months, uh, that'll be used to control our lives and to monitor everything we do. People get worried because, oh, I gotta be careful now because they're gonna, they're gonna track what I do and what videos I watch online. And I tell people all the time, they've been doing that ever since you got on the internet. In fact, there's evidence that that's really why the internet came into being in the first place, so that they could monitor and track everything you do. Folks, we have to prepare for this. We can't sit back and say, wow, this is too much. There's no way one person or one family or even one small community can brace ourselves for this. And if you allow fear to overcome you, then yeah, you would be right. But we can overcome this. We can overcome this if we stick together, if we become the lions that we are meant to be and build communities and plans build that tribal like that tribal like community to where we are sticking together and ready to to ride the wave out of here and who knows depending on which theory of the Pole reversal, riding the wave, just might be more literal than you think. <clears throat> it's scary times sometimes. You sit back and you really let it all, kind of take it all in. I think that's why most people, even preppers, don't. They focus on <clears throat> one aspect of what's going on. Maybe not all the time, but just in that moment, you know. Today we're prepping for, you know, the, 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 the rule of law ending. Today we're prepping for collapse of our food system. Today we're prepping for hyperinflation. Well, what do you do with all of that combined? This is why many of us have become a little bit more serious. I've noticed some of the prepper channels that I follow, that I would consider giving really good information. Um, even some that aren't prepper channels, just you know, some of its financial channels and, and other things. They've gotten very serious about trying to convey the message that we're living in a in a collapse and it's gonna get bad it's it's gonna it's gonna start hurting it already is for millions of people all over the planet there's countless protests and riots in europe people on the verge of being homeless in europe and in the united states millions of people could be evicted in the next month or two 20 million people are backed up on their utility bills here in the United States. It's not even the cold season yet. Things are gonna get rough. We have to have the clarity of our mind, the boldness and the fearlessness of our heart, our soul, and the most strength that we can muster physically to get through this because we're gonna be put to the test. We as a species, and especially as Westerners and Americans, we've had a very easy life for the most part. Even those of you that say, yeah, but my life was worse. I'm not denying it. Some of you have lived a very hard, tough life. But most likely it's not going to be anything compared to what the world is about to witness. I really hate sounding like a doomsdayer. I want to get on here all the time and just uplift, tell you all these positive things. But that would be foolish and irresponsible of me, irresponsible of the this channel, this audience that 
that I believe the Father in Heaven has given me. We have to sound the alarm. We have to wake up as many lions as possible. The sheep are going to be sheep. And at this point, probably, you and I aren't going to have much success in waking them up. They're going to have to wake up on their own. We need to be focusing our energies, our abilities, our time, our money on getting ourselves ready and waking up the lions in our community, building our communities, working through the logistics and the structure of that so that as this, this thing, this collapse happens, as this inflection point, as Joe Biden says, we will be as prepared as possible. I can't promise you that we're gonna come out on the other side smelling like roses. I can't promise you that it's gonna be so much easier and better because we've prepared. No, all preparedness is, is an insurance policy. It just increases your odds of survival, that's all. Many of us hope and believe that this will be the last of these inflection points before a new heaven and new earth comes. But even if that's not the case, we still see ample evidence that our society is crumbling around us and this Western world is not, no longer capable of holding up its own weight. And instead of getting caught up in the drag as it sinks to the bottom, we need to do as much as we can right now to get our distance from that sinking ship so that it doesn't pull us down with it. That's why I advocate every day on here, self-sufficiency. This is the world we're living in. It's time to embrace the suck, folks. Uh, acknowledge that it's happening and be grateful that it's happening now so that our children and grandchildren won't have to deal with it. And that we, the last maybe people, you know, my generation and older are some of the last, at least Americans, that have the strength to really get through this. If we wait another decade or so, there'll be a lot less of us that's capable of really surviving. Folks, it's serious. Get your houses in order. I, I say this all the time. It's not just a slogan. It's for real. We have to prepare ourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually because it's going to come at us from all sides. It's going to affect our psyche. It's going to wear our, our body down and there's gonna be direct attacks on our spiritual life because we're dealing with spiritual warfare. Folks, it's time to, to buck up and get serious. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.